day job right now is uh, I uh, talk to developers, talk to architects, uh, talk to engineers who build all sorts of distributed systems and maybe streaming ATL, uh, data pipeline systems, and uh, majority of things involve somehow Kafka or any event streaming architecture that um, is getting traction in the last couple of years. So I help them to build more efficient architecture, help to build um, different use cases and uh, help to optimize existing uh, deployments and architecture. Cool. So, and you have a session which is building a streaming data pipeline. Yeah. So, it's, so what is that about? Yes. Um, so basically, one of the things that uh, I think it's it's actually very exciting if you need to build ATL systems in 2019, right? <laughs> so we're trying to make this uh, as uh, as exciting as possible. So it's going to be a live coding session. Uh, where um, I will be capturing some uh, some of the changes that happens on database in the real time and trying to um, get some derived data. For example, show the, how you can detect some of the some of the patterns. For example, one of the use cases that I will be demonstrating is how to detect if you have uh, some um, say unhappy uh, VIP customers that you want to react. So it will be kind of combination the information that comes from the you know old system, which is going to be just traditional by database, we will capture these changes, pipe it through Kafka using key SQL to analyze it to do um, actual kind of like a branching to figure out, okay, so this is a this is a VIP customer and we need to figure out what's his response, is a good response, bad response, and after that we'll send notification to Slack. Um, and I will kind of demonstrate this on the stage, uh, you know, during the talking, talking and typing at the same time. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, the whole point to show that uh, the the stream processing technology right now at the stage where you know you don't need to be afraid and the building this uh, data driven application is actually easy and the key SQL the the the, the, uh, the um, this is part of the technology is basically um, SQL engine for Apache Kafka that allows you to um, not that you cannot uh, code in Java or you don't want to. But sometimes if you want to um, build some simple use cases, you don't need to reinvent all architecture and infrastructure. You just can focus on actual data. Okay, so, yeah. and, and then you said also something else, which is you can use Kafka with anything, right? Yeah, because yeah. you can use it with a traditional uh, database. Right, which you right, so to I'm, I'm gonna be, yeah, I'm gonna be showing these um, bits of the project called Debezium, which is uh, the project that um, uh, bridges the gap between um, uh, or like a closing the loop from the database is when your application works with database, writes with database, uh, there is no way how we can know what the changes were introduced. So Debezium allows to listen to these changes from database and kind of like a closing the loop and uh, you can share these changes uh, from database to Kafka, which becomes your you know, source of truth. And after that, you can replicate this event back uh, to system who interested in these kind of questions. Okay. And so w what are some of the m mistakes, I, I would say, or pitfalls that uh, people um, go through when they think about uh, streaming um, data in general or Kafka? So what's so the mental shift yeah, maybe? That yeah. So one of the things that uh, the historical people think about the Kafka is just another messaging system mm -hmm. where uh, people use it as just, uh, just a dumb pipe uh, for, that, mm -hmm. for that matter. Um, but Kafka evolved into full-blown streaming platform because Kafka itself includes a highly scalable, highly throughput system that allows you not only push messages with the high rate, but also uh, provide the way how you retain these messages. In traditional messaging systems, if you were absent when the messaging was supposed to be delivered, uh, there's no way how you can return to this one. With Kafka, you can always uh, return to some point of time where you, you know, you doing processing, you um, you were down. After that, you start reprocessing again. So Kafka allows this possibility. So Kafka, it's a combination of uh, some of the um, messaging capabilities with uh, consistency and durability guarantees of databases. Another components that people usually don't take into account, and we also we're we're, we're doing like a workshop for Java developers, is uh, Kafka streams, which built-in library in Kafka that allows you to write stream processing applications. Um, the easy way to understand this, if you have a Java, Java Util Streams API on the collections, Kafka Streams bring the same kind of feel 
for dealing with the stream, uh, stream or event-based applications. You have a stream from Kafka, and you process this the same way as you process in collection. There's map function, there's a filter function, there's grouping capabilities that allow you to do uh, stateful stream processing. Um, and there is a framework called the Kafka Connect that allows to easy ingestion of data from external sources. So you don't need to, like you're asking about pitfalls, people tend to, oh, I have Oracle, let me write a small app that will query Oracle and push data to Kafka. You don't need to do this because there is a connector of the shelf connector that can establish connection to your Oracle and just keep listening to changes from this database. Um, and the last thing that um, I want to, you know, focus today and explain one of the things people spending a lot of time on building infrastructure. Kafka is um, uh, naturally a distributed system that allows to scale horizontally and they pay a lot of attention into, okay, so let me focus on building this infrastructure and things that we're showing uh, today is how to use the cloud uh, provider. So we, we, we built a, the um, Kafka cloud, a managed Kafka cloud, where people can just focus on solving their tasks. So this is what we did. We, um, uh, we did the, the workshop where the people were focusing only uh, stream processing capabilities of uh, Kafka streams where they don't need to think about infrastructure. So they just get the uh, cluster provisioned in minutes um, and uh, another option is to use some like internal, like private um, cloud, like uh, maybe Kubernetes, and they can also provision. This is what we're going to be talking today. So we have a small, small meetup gathering today, and we're going to be talking about DevOps aspect of the streaming platforms. So, well, that's a good question. So, do you need DevOps? Of course. To, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course. I mean, There's is it a, like, yeah. Well, is it, um, I want to say, is it a must or, I mean, is it optional or is it a must? Uh, so it, it's, I'm yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a good, it's like, um, what's the word? Uh, it's a multi paradigm. So uh, it's, it's good where you have a, a DevOps culture and organization where you can place a Kafka as a, you know, the heart of your data neural system where the people can publish messages in Kafka and read messages from Kafka. So in this case, uh, they break in the silos inside organization. They have more communication inside organization. They know how to, um, uh, how data is managed, where data is structured. So they have a communication inside uh, internally. And uh, in order to like support evolution of the data, evolution of metadata, how they can do the processing. For example, one team is publishing this data what kind of it's going to be, what's the contract, what's the metadata, how this data look like, what's the schemas and things like that. So um, it is always good uh, with DevOps and because it simply enables a more effective organization rather than uh, the tools. And oh, tools there, obviously, uh, as, a, as a developers and uh, as a engineers, we like to, you know, to build these tools. And uh, we at Confluent, we, we, we're trying to provide all these tools to enable event-driven organizations. So where you can build uh, like event streaming platforms inside your organization using these tools. So I almost want to say, well, if someone is not, or an organization is not using DevOps, mm -hmm. well, so what are the risks? Are they, uh, the risk high that they will make mistakes and, or, or not? Uh, it, this is a very good question. And uh, I would say it's just meaning that if people do not uh, adopting DevOps culture these days, they just, uh, again, building these walls around maybe job security. It's fine. It's okay. You know, the people want to get keep get paid. It's fine. But, you know, you want to focus on building job security or, or you want to focus on building some of the things that might potentially change the world. I don't know. Right. And job security is just lasts, us, I mean, a certain amount of time <laughs> unless you <laughs> next to yeah. retirement. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, 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 uh, like, we, we like uh, we like a thing about like job security is that uh, not withholding information, but sharing information and make sure that uh, you're building the legacy and you not the legacy legacy, you're building your legacy because, you know, you you know how to build uh, efficient system, you can build more systems and the people can rely on your expertise in this case. I, I believe in this uh, job security. So this is why, you know, don't hesitate to find me and stop by. I'm wearing this T-shirt beyond your while the streams, obviously, because streams are everywhere. Um, and uh, ask any questions about uh, streaming platform, Kafka, and uh, data-driven organizations. Okay, I had another question. Please, there, absolutely. Um, which I forgot what it was. Oh yeah, so what are some, like, do you see some use cases that um, 
that people are not, I mean, uh, not taking advantage of today, mm -hmm. like uh, using Kafka. Kafka. So, yeah. yeah. So, uh, this is a very good question. And uh, one of these use cases where traditionally in, uh, I'm not talking about microservices, maybe in any interaction between external systems, historically are built on uh, synchronous communication. And uh, even when the people adopting the frameworks like Kafka streams, they still uh, keep thinking in uh, uh, traditional. Okay, so I have my Kafka uh, streams from Kafka. I use my Kafka streams to process the stream, but I want to enrich the stream with some data that will come from third party system. Let me call this external system right from my uh, stream processing application, which is, I would say, it's uh, also like correlation for your previous question, one of the pitfalls. Um, so in this case, uh, you're still in uh, trying to build uh, the stream processing application, but you will be depending directly from the call. I would say that using the tools uh, um, like a Kafka Connect that allows you to simply bring data to Kafka so your data will be available. You don't need to kind of like a call for this data every time because data will be already in Kafka. Um, and I think this is one of the disadvantages when the people think that if they can do something with it, um, it's not necessarily you need to do it. Like Java API will not prevent you. Like you have a full um, opportunity to do whatever you want. However, maybe it's not a good idea to, to mix this kind of things where you rather have a connector that brings the data into Kafka. I would say these days um, the, the connector framework uh, um, is, is widely adopted, but not enough. People knows about Kafka, knows about pop sub capabilities, but uh, they tend to reinvent the wheel over and over again, building these small apps, like ad hoc apps, where the connector and connect framework provides a distributed runtime, full tolerant, uh, can restart the connectors if it failed. Um, you can scale up all these things already solved in, in the framework. It's a part of Apache Kafka streaming platform. Okay, so use the connector. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it sounds like a really great idea since, I mean, all the data is coming from different places. Exactly. Right? So, yes. Yeah. One uh, of the interesting yeah. things that um, uh, I had the conversation with my uh, the partner in crime, uh, the Baruch, from, uh, from the Oracle Code 1, and we did an actual presentation about the connectors and the Kafka, and uh, one of the people stopped by and asked him a question, like how he would do a replication from the sources like Oracle to Mongo or from Oracle, from Mongo to Oracle. And it turns out there are connectors that allow you to simple plug and play these kind of things. Uh, there's a connector uh, from the Oracle that um, there's two flavors. There's GBC connector, there's Golden Gate connector that allows you to listen changes from Oracle and vice versa to publish to Oracle through GDBC you know, take some data from, from Mongo or takes data from Oracle to, to GDBC. It can be like multiple directions. So it actually creates multiple possibilities for sharing the data. You mentioned legacy uh, ERP system well, where data does, is not available through uh, like API interfaces, but you can um, listen database changes, populate these changes into Kafka. It enable other applications to use this data within the organization. You break in these silos that uh, was, was created before through this uh, legacy application. And, um, and then you don't have to maintain it because the connector is already something that yeah. is maintained and yeah. maintained yeah. by somebody else. Yeah, right? yeah, so it's, uh, yeah. some sure connectors are commercial, some com connectors are open source. Mm -hmm. um, there is a, uh, the, we maintain a website where the people can go and find the connectors, confluent io slash hub. Uh, we, you know, people don't need to like download zips. There's a tool like come online tool that allows you to install this connector to your Kafka installation. So you don't need to even uh, like worry. So we like to think about this as a, like app store for connectors. Like if you want to sell your connector or if you want to provide your connector, you just go and the, the, there's like very simple set of rules that you need to follow. And usually there's even like a Maven a plugin that allows you to do all these checks for to, to bundle this connector. Great. So all about connectors. Yeah. Adapt so and that's going to be tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be ah, talk yes. about uh, data pipelines. And you would know that the building data pipelines and the streaming ATL is actually fun stuff. And it can be done through the one conference session. Great. So thank you. Thank you for having me. Right. As always, it's and a pleasure.
contact him if you have any questions. He's really like the Thank best. you. Stay, stay tuned for new awesome videos from NetHacking live from JFocus. Thank you.